today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Surface RT, Microsoft's first tablet in the Surface lineup that released back in October 2012. Later on, I'll show you how to install Raspberry Pi OS so we can maybe get a little more use out of this thing. So it's been over a decade since this thing released. Now because of its age, we are going to be limited in what we are able to do nowadays for a multitude of reasons. As I said before, you can't really do that much with it, and that's partially because the hardware on this device is pretty old. Along with that, it's also running on a 32-bit version of Windows 8 for ARM. Now, if you don't know what ARM means in this case, it basically means that the CPU in it is what's called a RISC, or Reduced Instruction Set Computer, and most normal CPUs are a CISC, or com Complex Instruction Set Computer. So a lot of the programs that other computers will run, or can run, would need to be rewritten for these processors, or at the very least emulated, like in the Surface Pro X. Now, if this device could emulate those pro other programs natively, I would imagine there'd be a great deal more we could do with it, but let's see what we can actually do as is. To start, we're going to be looking at the browser for this. It comes pre-installed with Internet Explorer only, which wouldn't be too much of an issue, except most sites aren't actually being built with Internet Explorer in mind anymore, so most sites aren't going to function at all, or will be really buggy. Like if you try to load up YouTube or Twitch, for example, they get stuck loading forever, unable to watch or do anything. Meanwhile, other social media sites like Reddit will sort of load. However, none of the content being displayed will be formatted correctly. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just install a new browser like Microsoft Edge or Chrome? Well, you can't. As mentioned earlier, the CPU from this machine is different from what's in other computers and operating systems technically as well. With any other system, you would just go to the website, download the EXE and install. Unfortunately, with this device, without modification, everything has to be installed via the Windows Store, as you can see. Now that wouldn't be too big of an issue, except this version of the Windows Store no longer works. Okay then, if that doesn't work, we are essentially stuck to whatever is actually pre-installed on the device. So what else is there? There is technically the Games app, except that just like with the Microsoft Store, also doesn't work. Though I do find it kind of funny that Product Sparkables things is still showing up on there, since it was completely shut down sometime in 2016. Well, there is Microsoft Office suite of apps that you can use. These are our older versions, the 2013 versions, but they are still suitable. I'm going to preface this by saying these are about the only actually useful apps that are usable and pre-installed with the machine. They run decently fine. You're not going to want to make any big projects on this thing since the device only does have 2 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, if you do want a device that mainly just makes Word documents, then hey, you get this and do that. But how about moving files around? Without being able to connect to most websites or apps like OneDrive, you really aren't really going to be able to move files around as easily as you would unless you want to plug in a flash drive. But hey, maybe even NAS on your home network and you back things up on your home server anyways. Well, there is, yet again, another issue with that. The Surface RT only supports SMB version 1, and by default, something like TrueNAS Core only has support for SMB 2 and 3 turned on by default. Though we can turn on support for SMB 1 if we really want to, and TrueNAS Core, Open Network, Global Configuration, then turn on NetBIOS-NS, and wait a moment. After that, you should be able to connect your SMB share with the Surface. Now, if your NAS is only used on your local network, this might not be a bad idea for both devices, but you really should be careful since both this device isn't getting antivirus updates and SMB1 being out of date, meaning it's more prone to vulnerabilities. But hey, since that works, maybe we can get slightly more use out of this thing. Sort of. As the only real benefits to this adds is if you are needing to do work, work away from your disk at home and you need to access whatever you have stored on your NAS, or maybe if you're super worried about getting a more expensive device getting stolen while out and about, and the only thing you're planning on doing is maybe a bit of writing, then this should be more than fine for that. So aside from that, does this have any, any legitimate uses, any vanilla configuration? Really the only other use I can see this being is for either streaming or downloading any videos that are not in MKV format, or streaming or downloading music onto the device and using it as a sort of a movie or music player. So honestly, if you're looking at getting a Surface RT 1 or 2, I would just stay away from it, unless you want to attempt to install a different operating system onto it, which is what we'll be getting into next. So to start, you're going to want to open this app I have in the description. Now if YouTube doesn't allow me to put the whole link in there, I'll just be putting it in as two lines. Now we're going to need a flash drive to keep going here. I'll have a 32 gig flash drive, but I believe all you really need is a 16 gigabyte flash drive for this operating system that we're installing later. So we're just going to download the checker jailbreak usb.zip file on the site, then preferably extract it to a empty flash drive. I don't want to hear that when downloading the file, I might say there's a virus. Just allow it as we're just going to be moving this onto a flash drive anyways. And as the website says here, apparently one file from Uriel Hollow, Uriel Hollow, has been detected as a virus apparently by multiple different antivirus softwares. And I'm going to assume for the rest of this, either you either have a combination of a flash drive in the typing cover, or a flash drive USB plus hub, and an external keyboard and mouse. To make this simple on everyone, we're going to insert the flash drive into the surface, then open up the flash drive. Once we're in there, right click on the jailbreak USB menu and run as administrator. 
for this, I'm going to just say which options we're picking. And once you do pick that and enter, just follow the prompts to get back to the main menu. So first, type 1, hit enter, and then once back at the menu, hit B, then enter. Once back at the menu, hit R, then enter. Now the computer is going to reboot. Don't touch it for about the next minute while the timer goes down and the next screen comes up. Once the next screen, once at the next screen, simply hit volume down on the side of the screen, then tap on the Windows logo on the device itself to accept. Once you do that, the screen will turn off, then the computer will reboot. Now we're going to open the same program the same way we did before. This time for options, it's going to be 3, then B, then R. The computer will reboot like it did before. Let the timer count down. It will go to a new screen. You will know when this part is done when the bottom of the screen says something like, please reset your device normally using the power button. Do that and turn the computer back on. Now annoyingly, we do have to do this one more time according to the Gitbook page that houses all of the documentation. Open the same program once again, but this time our options will be 2, B, R. Now I do want to add here that I completely forgot to get footage of this part. Let the computer do its thing one more time. Then we're done with that step. To double check what we did was correct, log into the computer, hit Windows plus R, or hit Windows and type in Run and click on the app. Once in there, type in MS Info 32, give it a moment to load, then we're going to look to the right and find Secure Boot State, and make sure it's off. If it is, then we're going to work on the next step, creating the flash drive with PyOS on it. Once again, I'm going to make this simple. I'm not going to have anyone trying to make the flash drive the way they say in the Gutbook page, since they do have a pre-built disk image that we can put under our flash drive to install onto our surface. Here is the link to the page with it. It's just going to be under our PyOS Bookworm USB pre-built image. Now if you have an app to install this to, that's great. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Rufus, since it's very small and easy to use. Here is the link to that as well. Just download whichever version works best for you. Now open Rufus, select your flash drive, click the select button, then choose the file we downloaded just a moment ago, and hit start. Now, we now all we gotta do is wait for the app to finish making the boot drive. Once it's done, we can go back to our Surface. Make sure your Surface is completely off. Now if our Surface hasn't been updated since before 2016, we shouldn't have any issues with the next step as well. Just be holding the volume down and pressing the power off with the flash drive in the USB slot. If you aren't able to boot with a USB, then I'm going to show you how to completely wipe your Surface's hard drive so that the Windows installation doesn't cause any issues with us installing PyOS. Log back into your Surface, hit the Windows key and type in Startup, then choose the first option. Next hit Restart, now under Advanced Startup in the Recovery tab. Let the Surface reboot. Click Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and then the Command Prompt. Now if either your Volume Down button or Power button aren't working properly, then you should just stop here as you potentially won't be able to reinstall anything. But if all your buttons are working, next we'll just click on the user account if there's one, enter your password. Now we're going to type in a few commands. Disk Part, Enter. Select Disk 0, Enter. Clean, Enter. Convert GPT, Enter. Exit. Now we can turn off our Surface. Now put in the flash drive to the surface, hold volume down and hit power. Once the surface logo comes up, let go of the volume button. Give it a moment and the tablet will boot into the PyOS installation screen. After this, we're going to just follow the prompts on the screen. You can connect to the internet now if you want, or skip that and do it later. Once we're done entering everything, the surface will say it's going to restart. Really though, it's just turning off the tablet in this case, and we're going to have to hold the volume down and hit the power button again, since the tablet will need to boot from the flash drive one more time. Now once we're in the operating system, we're just going to click on the Raspberry in the top left. Go to Accessories, SD Card Copier, and open that. Once it opens, we're going to click on Copy from the device, and choose the flash drive. Then click Copy to Device, and choose the other drive that's listed. Finally, click on New Partition, UUIDS, hit Start, then hit Yes on the next prompt. Now we're going to let the Surface copy everything from the flash drive to the internal hard drive. This is going to take a while, so make sure your Surface is charging, as it'll take about 20 minutes to complete. Lastly, we're going to open our File Explorer, going into the BootFS folder. Type in the password you used in the setup screen. Find the startup.nsh file. Right click it and open it with the text editor. Once open, we're going to edit the text after where it says root equals. Replace the part UUID and following numbers with slash dev slash mmcblk0p2 and save. Now we can go ahead and turn off the tablet and remove our flash drive and reboot. Now we should now boot into the PyOS on the hard drive, and with that, we're technically done. We are going to want to do a couple more things. First, go ahead and connect to whichever network you plan to use. Then open the command prompt, typing in sudo full apt minus upgrade. This is going to install any updates that were pending, and for the first set of updates, we need to do it through the command prompt, or some other updates are going to fail later on. Now this process does take a while, and there will be one prompt during the process. We'll just hit Q to quit that. Then the Surface should continue installing updates for another little while. 
And for that, we are done setting up the Surface Tablet, and you should be all good to go. I'm not going to lie, the Surface Tablet really isn't all that much more useful with a Pi OS on it, but it does allow you to use your browser, and if you don't mind waiting a while, some more websites will actually load up and you can use it for that, and you, know, you can install it, maybe install like VLC Media Player or any, some other random video player, and use it to just play movies on your device or play music again on your device, but with a more expanded functionality. Also, if you don't feel like messing with the device, just don't buy a Surface Tablet. Get something to work. Get a Surface 3. Buy one used for like $50, $100 maybe. The Surface RT I got was about $50 used. It's not really worth it. You can't really do too much with it, and honestly, it'll just probably just be added to a uh, trash pile, and you should just completely avoid this device if you can. But if you do have it, this is a way to get a little bit more use out of it. If, but hey, that's all for today. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like and maybe comment down below. Or if you appreciate the tutorial bit, make sure to subscribe as well.